Good evening, everyone. It's time to get back in the Father's Word just a few minutes and see what He's telling us today. And I know what He's telling us is well and good and right. And if we'll listen and obey what it says, one day when we go to sleep for a last time on this earth, one day we will wake at His feet. Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, as you give us this opportunity to get back in your word one more time, I pray, O Lord, you anoint these lips of clay that they may speak with understanding and that they will bless someone along the way, give them more hope and more security that they are saved and that they are ready to go home in the morning, Lord, when you call their name. I pray you pour out your spirit on each one tonight, this evening, that it would anoint their soul and their body and feel your spirit running up and down the avenues of their soul. And I pray, O oh Lord, you to draw us all closer to you and give us a stronger desire to follow you and to know that you are all we have and that you are our all in all and all we we'll ever need to make it through this world and enter into heaven one day. These things we ask in the lovely and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and amen. We're going to be studying from the Thessalonians. This is Paul's writing again. Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. The King James Version Bible. I know some people put down the King James Bible today. But it is the true Word of God. It's true as it gets. And it's up to them to choose it. Or to walk away. But all are in the hands of a just and almighty God, and he will for surely have the last say. Fifth chapter, and if you got your Bible, turn along, turn and read along with me in case I mispronounce a word, and sometimes I do. And we're going to begin at verse number one. Chapter 5, verse number 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, brethren are the those that have announced that they are a Christian and have been saved. You have no need that I write unto you. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. This is referring back to, for us to watch and pray, for we not, know not when the Son of Man will come. We know, we know not the day or the hour. He is going to call us away. Therefore, He wants us to be ready. Verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, just as sure as a woman has to give birth. And they cannot escape the pain that will be there. Neither can anyone escape. If they are lost and undone, when God calls them away, because they'll forever stand in that condition, however they live 
leave this earth down here. It's a condition they go meet him up there. If they're lost, they'll be lost when they meet him. If we're saved down here, we'll be saved when we meet him. When he calls our name and calls us away from this world, and for sure, one day he is going to call us away from this world. For but ye brethren are not in darkness, that they that, that day should overtake you as a thief. In other words, you should be watching. And it will be no surprise when it comes. He referred to it as a thief. People don't know when thieves are going to break into their homes and steal. Neither do we know when he's going to call our number. And we will have to go to meet him. And give an account according to the deeds we have done in this body. Verse 5, ye are all the children of light. It, again, if we have been saved and redeemed, we are the children of light. Ye are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. He's talking to the ones that he has been saved. He's also talking to the ones that's reading this word that tells us to watch and pray. He tells us how to, how to look at his word and make sure our name is written in that last book of life and not guess at it, not say maybe I am, I might be, but I won't know till I get there. We will know if it's sincere. Before we close our eyes in death, we will know that we have been redeemed and we should know it today. Six, therefore, let not your sleep, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. What's he talking about? Sober, be clean, not entangled and the affairs of this world. Verse 7, For they that sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. However, they are called away from this world. As I've already stated, they will stand before him on that judgment day, either lost or saved, either forever condemned to die, and be cast to the lake of fire, or to ever be raised up to live with him forever in glory land someday. Verse 8, But let us who are of the day, those that have been saved, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for and helmet, the hope of salvation. This is a lot of things that people need on today. And the Holy Spirit will reveal to those, to us, the ones that really have on the armor of God. The armor that he is talking about right here. It said for and helmet, the hope of salvation. Where's the people's hope today of salvation that don't care how they live their lives? They don't care how dark it is. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care who they shove around. But one day, the day will come, their eyes are going to be open. Then they're going to recognize Jesus when they see him coming back in the clouds of glory. Then they're going to know who he is. They're going to know what they've done to the fellow man, but it's too late to go back and make it right because they left this world 
unprepared to meet him. Verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's his will for us to be saved. It's not his will for any to perish, but all come to repentance and have everlasting life. That's what God's will is for us. And if we obey him and trust in him, he will give us many callings, many gifts in this life to operate for him in his glory and to be a witness to those that are saved, to walk closer to him, those that are strayed to come back to him, and for those that are lost to be saved. Ten who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. With him, live with God in glory. Someday, live with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Someday. When he calls us away from this world, we can be ready to go and meet him. When that day and that hour comes, and it will come, but let us be sober, watching for him, looking for him, and listening to hear him, his voice, call our number, call our name, when that great day comes. We may be a set in the crowd of a thousand people. When he calls our name, we will hear it, but the rest won't. And when we hear it, we will heed that call. We will answer that call. Whether we may be good or may be bad, we'll still answer that call and go on to meet the deeds that we have done in this body. As we journey along through this world, on our way to that heavenly home, but don't let nobody ever say that because uh, you're saved, we can never sin no more. That's the wrong as wrong can be because if we didn't sin, he wouldn't have required us to repent it daily and ask God to forgive us for our sins. Verse 11, Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. People today, instead of edifying one another, majority wants to put one another down. But that is not the way the Lord works. That is not the way a true Christian works. We may see somebody do something. We know it's wrong. But instead of putting them down, talk to God about it. And talk to them in a gentle way about it. Not arguing, not fussing, but go as gentle as we can go. And speak kind words to them. And tell them the Lord loves them. And the Lord will use them. And they, they can be saved. They can come back and regain what they've lost. They can get back on the old path where they once walked. That was right and good. Verse 12, And we beseech you, or urge you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. You remember the ones that's telling you the right words. Feed you words of the gospel that will heal. He can deliver. He can set free. He can wash and make as white as snow. Thirteen, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. I know of people that would gather outside of a church house and try to sell eggs. Thought there would be a blessing someone. But they were trying to sell eggs to profit themselves. Not concerned about their lost. 
about maybe their, even their lost children and loved ones that need to be saved. But they were concerned about selling eggs. Some would get angry and mad if somebody was sitting in their seat that they hadn't got there to fill. But all the inside of all the church, it belongs to God. It don't belong to man. And every pew in the church house belongs to God and not man. But God allows people to sit on them where they can witness to each other, where they can build each other up and not fuss among themselves, but take all things to God in prayer and meet Him at the altar of grace, altar of praise, the altar of repentance, so they could all pray together and walk as one body in Christ Jesus. It says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. This backs up what I had just said. Now we, now we exhort you, build up, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Warn them that God don't love that kind of things that are going on in the body of Christ. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. The majority of that verse of Scripture is not being done today as He commanded us to do. In this word is written for all, myself included, I am not exempt from obeying God's word and his instruction he gave us to live by. 15. See that none render evil for evil and any man but every follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. We cannot do this unless the God, the Lord, is dwelling within us and we are dwelling in Him. Because without Him, we can do nothing. And without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we are none of His. 16. Rejoice evermore. Let all our days be rejoicing and giving God praise for His great love and the mercy He's had on us all down through the ages. As long as we lived and can remember back, He has blessed us every way. I know many of us have gone through hard and hurtful times and troubled times, but he brought us through every one of them. And we're still here today. So let's praise God, ask him, bless him for showing us the way and for keeping us through those things. 17. Pray without ceasing. In everything give Thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Every one of us, again, he's speaking all. And to pray without ceasing, it means to have a prayerful heart wherever you're at. And a prayerful mind. 19. Quench not the spirit. Be it now, my friend. This is a verse of scripture that every child of God needs to look into. Quench not the spirit. People quench it all the time, especially around churches. 
they'll they'll not let it. They got so much time schedule that they must be exactly on time. They must get out exactly on the hour, on the minute of that hour. Not concerning it quenches the spirit of God. They'll refuse to let someone continue on as they get into a song and that spirit begins to flood them, flood their soul, and a message begins to come. They won't let them carry on because they sit on such a time schedule. They don't want to break it. They want to get out and go home. Twenty, despise not prophecy. Do not despise the word of God because it all prophesied that Jesus would come and he did come. It was prophesied he would return and he will return again. 21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Which is good is what pertains to eternal life. Hold fast. That is good. The good of heart to God that you reach out and pray for the others that are in need of salvation and of a closer walk with the Lord and to bring back those, or lead back those that have gone astray because we all, like sheep, have gone astray somewhere in, in our life. 22, abstain from all, from all appearance of evil. People don't care today what kind of evil they're around. But this says here, this states here. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Just the appearance. That it might seem like we're in the middle of something we shouldn't be. The appearance. Abstain from that. Then people say, it's good to go in the bar and drink and have a big time and then be saved. No, it is not. He tells us to stay away from those things. The appearance of evil. We can do the wrong thing, but other people would judge us. People offer something that we don't need. But if we take it in order not to offend them, we are one did the wrong because the appearance of the evil was there. Twenty three, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder today how many are blameless. And I wonder how many are really whole in spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a job before us to keep ourselves in this condition in all ways relying and leaning on God to help us through all the troubles and trials we have to go through with, our disappointments, our struggles, and to remain faithful to Him. 24. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. He is faithful that, he, that called us, and he'll be a, a, faithful to perform what he said he would do to and for us. If we'll follow him and make sure our name is written in that lounge book of life. 25, brethren, pray for us. 26, greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. This holy kiss is from, is from the love that we have for each other. Because today 
You couldn't hug and kiss anyone. We would be judged. COVID would. But we can hug and kiss them through our love, through good deeds, through reaching out to them and helping them along the way and leading them, trying to lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that died for them to save their soul, that they wouldn't have to go to devil's hell that wasn't even prepared for mankind, but prepared for the devils and his angels. 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle or these words be read unto all the holy brethren. This is to one and all, every one living. And to everyone that's already gone on, it's supposed to have been read to them. Now I'm going to read this 27 again and 28. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle, or this word, be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And he sealed that with amen. That it can never be changed. People may add to it. They may take away from it. But this word stands secure and sure in heaven. And forever more will stand. And the Lord is the living word from beginning to end. And it is going to forever stand. And every word is settled in heaven to remain God's word. Now there's so much in this, this chapter, in these words, it should make our hearts rejoice and be glad if we know our name is recorded in a Lamb book of life, that we have been saved, then we have a great reward waiting for us at the end of the way. But let us not mess up and lose those rewards. Let's not turn away from our Lord and Savior who's a pleading today for all that will to come unto Him and to be saved and to be made whole and to come return back to Him and pick up the old cross and keep our cross of self-denial and keep following in Him. Deny ourselves of the pleasures of the world, but accept Him and walk with Him and give Him all the praise and glory. Then one day we will hear Him say, Well done. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's getting we come to You, Lord, with a thankful heart. For thank you for these words you've just given us. And I pray, O oh Lord, you anoint the hearts of the listeners, that they will feel your Holy Spirit raging through their body and soul. And I pray, O oh Lord, this will lead someone to a better understanding with you and have a greater desire to follow you and be saved and to know their name is recorded in that loud book of life. And I pray, Lord, for those, Lord, today, that sick and afflicted Lord. I pray, Lord, you reach down. Uh, touch, heal, deliver, and set free. Uh, if it be your love and will, Lord. Uh, and I pray for those that's lost uh, and undone. Uh, I pray, Lord, you say someone today. Uh, and send your drawing spirit to them uh, one more time, Lord. Uh, and give them one more opportunity. Uh, I accept you. Uh, I before they leave this world, Lord. Uh, because we know uh, how every person leaves this world uh, is a they're going to stand before you huh, on that great judgment day. Huh? And I pray, O oh Lord, huh, you fill our hearts with joy huh, and to know huh, that when you call our name, huh, uh, we will be there. Huh, and then we can step aside huh, and bow our head huh, and give you the praise and honor and glory huh, that we don't know how to give today. Huh, because, Lord, you've been so good to us huh, uh, down through the years huh, and bless us in so many ways. Huh, we don't 
don't know, really know how to praise you. Uh, we can't even thank you enough. Uh, but Lord, you know all things. Uh, and we lay all things at your feet. Uh, and Lord, I pray one more time. Uh, just let us be able to rest in peace. Uh, when we lay on a pillow of the night. Uh, and knowing if we don't wake you more down here. Uh, we'll wake at your feet. Uh, and give you praise and glory forevermore. These things we ask in the blessed name. In the wonderful name. Our for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And amen. And thank you, Father, Lord, for your love and your mercy.